Hey guys, it's Morgan, and today I'm going to be talking about Season 1 of Stranger Things. Now, if you haven't seen Season 1 of Stranger Things and you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching the video now, go watch Season 1, it's on Netflix, there are 8 episodes, and then when you're done with that, then come back. Or if you don't care about being spoiled, keep watching. So this is my review of Season 1 of Stranger Things. The show certainly started off with a bang with the scientists getting attacked by an unseen monster, and then a little while later, Will got taken away by the exact same monster. I thought Winona Ryder, who plays Joyce, did a really great job of capturing the feelings that any parent would have when they don't know where their child is. It was really cute when Mike gave Eleven the nickname L, and it was also really cute when they said goodnight to each other. And I also really liked that even though Lucas and Dustin were suspicious of Eleven when they first met her, Mike wasn't. I felt really sorry for Eleven when Mike had her hide in the closet and she had a flashback of being put in a cell at the Hawkins laboratory. But I also really liked that when Mike came back for her, he made sure she was okay. I really liked the scene when Lucas is about to leave Mike's room to tell Mike's mother about Eleven, but before he can, Eleven uses her telekinetic powers to close the door and lock it. You could definitely tell the boys were very surprised that she could do that. I really liked the scene when Eleven was using the pieces from the Dungeons and Dragons game to show Mike, Lucas, and Dustin that Will was hiding from a monster. I felt really sorry for Joyce both times that she heard Will on the phone but then the phone blew out, and I also felt sorry for her when the lights were flickering and she heard the song Should I Stay or Should I Go playing, which was a song that Will and his brother Jonathan listened to together. I felt really sorry for Barb when Nancy was paying more attention to Steve than she was to Barb which wasn't exactly a good thing since the same monster that took Will ended up taking Barb. I felt sorry for Joyce when she was trying to tell Jonathan that she had been communicating with Will with the lights, but Jonathan didn't believe her, which I could also understand because it does sound really crazy. I thought it was really funny when Mike, Lucas, and Dustin were getting ready to go with Eleven to look for Will, and Lucas packed weapons and Dustin packed snacks. Which, I mean, is handy to have, but I don't think would be much help if you're facing a monster. I know that to anyone else, Joyce may seem crazy, but I was actually really impressed that she was so determined to communicate with Will with the lights that she hung up a lot of Christmas lights. I know that Jonathan taking pictures of everyone at Steve's party without them knowing was wrong, but it was still unfair that Steve broke Jonathan's camera. It was a really sad flashback when the scientists were trying to make Eleven kill a cat with her powers, but she wouldn't do it, so they dragged her off to solitary confinement, but before they could close the door, she used her powers to kill two of the guards. I really like the scene when Joyce is communicating with Will with the Christmas lights, and she tells him to blink once for yes and twice for no, and she asks him if he's alive, and he says yes, and then she asks him if he's safe, and he says no. It was a really sad scene when they found what they thought was Will's body and Mike asked Eleven why she told them Will was still alive, but all Eleven says is Mike's name and then Mike runs home. I was really glad that Eleven was able to prove to Mike that Will was still alive. I really liked the scene when Nancy was telling Jonathan about the monster that she saw in the picture of Barb from the party that Jonathan took and Jonathan realized that the monster that Nancy is describing is the same kind of monster that his mother Joyce was describing, and he realizes that his mother might have been telling the truth. It was a really sad scene when Joyce heard Will in the wall, and then she saw him in the wall, but when she made a hole in the wall to get him out, all she saw was her front porch. I could understand that Eleven was scared to find the gate to the Upside Down, which is why she made everyone's compasses lead them back home, but I also understood Lucas's reaction when he realized what Eleven did, because he just wants to find Will. I loved the scene when Hopper told Joyce that he went to the morgue and found out that the body they thought was Will was a fake, and he tells Joyce that she was right. I mean, finally! If you've seen the show, you know that Joyce was right, but it's nice that at least now one person believes her. When Joyce and Hopper were talking to Terry's sister and she was telling them how Terry had a miscarriage but had this fantasy that her daughter would come back with powers, even without the flashbacks of Eleven during that scene, you could tell that her daughter was Eleven. And since they didn't reunite in season one, I wonder if they ever will. 
I thought it was really funny when Eleven saved Mike and Dustin from the bullies, and as the bullies are running away, Dustin yelled after them, That's right, you better run! She's our friend and she's crazy! I liked when Joyce, Hopper, Nancy, Jonathan, Mike, Dustin, Lucas, and Eleven all met up together and talked about how Eleven can use her powers to try and find Will and Barb. It was nice to see all the storylines finally coming together. I felt really sorry for Eleven when she freaked out after seeing Barb's dead body, but I did like how Joyce comforted her and told her it was okay. And then Eleven found Will and was able to talk to him for a while and the others could hear him through the walkie-talkie, but then he disappeared. I liked that Steve wanted to make things right with Jonathan, but I also understood why Nancy and Jonathan wanted him to leave. They didn't want him to be there when the monster showed up. But he wouldn't leave, so when the monster showed up, he saw it. And then it disappeared, and then he left. But I did like that he came back to help when he saw the lights flickering again. I thought it was cute when Mike told Eleven that after everything was over, his parents can get her a real bed to sleep in the basement, and that she could live with them. It was also really cute when he invited her to the school dance, and their kiss was really cute too. It was an emotional scene when Joyce and Hopper were in the Upside Down looking for Will, and it was also an emotional scene when they found Will, especially because of the flashbacks of Hopper and his daughter who died. It was a powerful scene when Eleven sacrificed herself and used her powers to get rid of the monster, but it was also an emotional scene when she turned around and said, Goodbye, Mike. And disappeared along with the monster. It was really funny how Mike, Lucas, and Dustin were telling Will about everything that had happened, and I loved Will's reaction. There was a good cliffhanger to lead into season two when Hopper left waffles, which are Levin's favorite food, in the woods, which could mean that she isn't really gone. Another good cliffhanger to lead into season two was when Will threw up a slug in the bathroom and then all of a sudden he was in the upside-down version of the bathroom, and then right back to his regular bathroom, but he doesn't tell Joyce or Jonathan. What could that mean? Does Will now have the power to go to the upside-down whenever he wants to? I guess we'll find out in Season 2, which comes out in 2017, but I don't think they announced a month yet, so we have to wait on that. Thanks for watching the video, guys! Let me know in the comments what your favorite parts of Season 1 of Stranger Things were, and also let me know your theories for Season 2. Bye!